Well, let me just tell you, I was certainly was poor in material things. But because of my family, because of my community, we had an unbelievably rich spirit. So as I looked around those dusty gravel roads, shotgun houses, and outside toilets, I saw families pulling together against some very tough odds. But it was so inspirational as I looked back on it. All they wanted was to make a better life for their children. When you think about all your parents, what they want to do is to make a better life for you. But it took the whole community. That's why today this is so important. You know, Colonel Willis, the folks he had brought here today, what they're trying to do is to make sure that you have a better life even than what they experience. If I can be a Brigadier General, you know, you can be a Major General, a Lieutenant General, or a General of the Army. Heroes. That's a word that people use today, I think, really too loosely. Well, let me just tell you, heroes, I don't believe heroes are people who are, you know, bigger than life characters on TV or athletes. The real heroes in my life, they watched over me as I was growing up. Through no fault of their own, the adults that I came in contact with in my community, most of them were not formally educated. They were domestics or sharecroppers because they were not allowed to have opportunity of education. But given those uh, drawbacks, they accomplished extraordinary deeds. I saw them overcome severe obstacles without losing their spirit. I watched them as they creatively found solutions to allow me and others to be able to not only dream, but to fulfill our dreams. Just give me an example. I remember in high school in Vicksburg, the first person to get a job as a cashier in Sears. Deborah Carson was my classmate in high school. Now that may not seem like an important event to you, but it was to us. This was a rarity because blacks were not hired the jobs with such great responsibility. So he gave us new hopes, new dreams, new goals, and new possibilities. So you, it takes so little to someone who has so little. Now some would say I grew up disadvantaged, I disagree. I was, again, fortunate to be around, surrounded by my family, community of men and women who were consistent in their messages and their deeds. And those three words, and then some. They worked hard for one reason, to ensure that their kids would have a better life than theirs. I know I would not be standing here today as a Brigadier General, retired from the United States Army, had it not been for them. Let me tell you who the real heroes in my life were. Two of them I'll just mention today were my grandmother and my mother, because they instilled in me values at an early age. These are the values I share with everybody I come in contact with. One, give thanks to God. Go to church and Sunday school every Sunday. To respect and care for older people. To always say, yes sir, no sir, yes ma'am, no ma'am. To have commitment, you know, discipline, love one another to treat all human beings with dignity and respect, and to live by the golden rule. They also taught me never forget where you came from. They taught me always be willing to give back. They taught me persistence to keep pressing forward against the current that didn't always flow my way, to push for opportunities that had been denied, to get my foot in the door, and to set such a sterling example that that door would not be closed again. All the members of my neighborhood enforce these values. I can't say that I was happy at times to have people looking over me when my parents went away. We had names for some of them people, for example, Miss Nosy Rose, man. But you did, you know, I did say Miss Nosy Rose, because respect 
no matter what you said about the matter, you still provide respect. Another individual who was an inspiration to me was my grandfather. His name was Jesse James. It was not his given name. That's the name he took on. <laughs> he was an entrepreneur. He could do anything. I'm sure he didn't know how to spell the word entrepreneur. But he had his own store. He raised farm animals. He could build anything. What made such an impression on me, though, he let me assist him in building all the things that he built. Storefront, chicken coop, smokehouse. I remember him buying me a carpenter set when I was in the first grade. And from then on, I was making things for people. So he gave me so much more than tools. He shared his knowledge and experience with me. So I learned early on from him and so many others about the importance of listening to advice from those who cared about me. So the bottom line is, parents, you know, parents are so important. Character counts. Listening to parents, listening to the people around you, your values, that will take you anywhere. Another people I'm, I'm a fan of, teachers. That's why I love coming to schools. I love being able to reinforce the things that teachers, you know, takes painstakingly uh, time to talk to you about and reinforce it, you know, based on my experience and what I've done. But teachers from elementary school to college served as role models, mentors, and friends. I remember putting together my first Negro History Week scrapbook at McIntyre Junior High School. Now it's called Black History Month. Mrs. Thomas was my teacher. At that time, I didn't know not a lot about the accomplishments of others. You might even say, well, why is it important to know something about the accomplishment of African Americans? Because I was segregated, and that's all I came in contact with. So that was my world. And I never saw doctors, lawyers, generals, officers, things like that. But in Mrs. Thomas' class, with his scrapbook, I was fascinated learning the significant accomplishments that African Americans had made in all walks of American life. It made me proud and inspired me to excel. Okay, an officer. Why an officer? I knew what I wanted to be when I was eight years old. I knew I wanted to be an officer. You say, well, how is that? But well, I told you the environment that I grew up in. I went to Sunday school every Sunday. One Sunday, I was coming back from uh, Sunday school, and I stopped by my cousin's house. I was the only child, because I always stopped by my cousins, with my playmates. I used to say I was a terrorist, and I'm sure I was a nice little kid. And they had this documentary on TV. On Sundays back then, we only had three stations, and Black and white, you know, no choice like we do today. And they have, on Sundays, not a lot on TV except documentaries. I remember this documentary on the United States Military Academy at West Point, where they showed these cadets. They would graduate from West Point, they would be commissioned as second lieutenants in the Army, and they would get great assignments all around the world and with great responsibility. But more importantly, the most important thing was that as an officer, you are judged by your word. You are judged by your character and not by the color of your skin. And I am living proof as a retired general officer that that, in fact, uh, is true. It's kind of neat that no one in my family had ever, <laughs> you know, been in the military that I knew of. And I found out later my uncle had. But no one had expired me. No one in my family had finished high school. No one had even uh, been to college. But that was my dream.